I have a Bible question for this guy, this guy right here. But I have a specific question about the Bible that maybe you can answer for me. Hey, Antonio, thanks for reaching out. I appreciate it. I apologize for not getting to this back in April when you originally posted it. I'm just seeing it now, uh, and I'm happy to help in whatever way I can. In the Bible, in Genesis, uh, after Cain um, unalives Abel, it says that God exiled him to the land of Nod. And there's an assumption that's made that he had children. He, um, you know, lived the rest of his existence in this land of Nod. But what is this? And if the only people that were alive were Cain, Abel, Seth, Adam, and Eve, who are these people in the land of Nod? Who, what, I just, I just, <laughs> what is going on here? So many scholars would suggest the narrative of Genesis 4 was originally independent of the narrative of Genesis 2 and 3, and the two narratives were stitched together at some point in the compositional history of the book of Genesis. And some scholars would say Genesis 2 and 3 were earlier. Some scholars would say Genesis 4 was earlier. But whatever the nature of their relationship, there are details in the narrative of Genesis 4 that suggest the author is presupposing the existence of other humans and wider human civilization. For instance, Cain is worried when he is cursed that anyone who finds him will kill him. And God does not say, nobody else is around. God says, fine, if anybody kills you, I will exact vengeance. Uh, and we also have Cain then knowing his wife, who's nowhere mentioned, and going to dwell in the land of Nod. Now, interestingly, the land of Nod means the land of wandering. So we've got to play on words here because in verse 12, Cain says that he's going to be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And the Hebrew words there are Na and Nod. So the land of Nod is the land of wandering. But the narrative kind of suggests that there is already a place that has been named the land of Nod. And so it's presupposing the existence of other humans. And toward the end of the chapter, we get uh, other children who are the eponymous ancestors of these nations that are in the area. And Cain is likely the eponymous ancestor. That is the ancestor who gives their name to these nations around Judah. The Kenites are probably uh, descended from Cain, and these are tent-dwelling uh, pastoralists who work in metallurgy, and so this is an etiology or an origin story for that nation and kind of paints them as descendants of Cain who live in a perpetual state of wandering. Now, at some point, Genesis 4 was attached to the story of the Garden of Eden in Genesis 2 and 3 via the conception of Cain and Abel by Adam and Eve. But uh, if Genesis 4 originally functioned as an etiology for these other groups, it would be a convenient thing to attach to Genesis 2 and 3, but that creates a new context for that conception and suddenly uh, these eponymous ancestors are being born into a world where no other humans exist and so it requires we reread these stories and uh, the history of the interpretation of these stories has come up with a variety of different ways to harmonize or reconcile the fact that Adam and Eve are supposed to be the only two people on the planet and the fact that Cain seems to be born into a world populated by other humans. So it's just part of the internal inconsistency uh, and the non-univocality of the biblical texts.